I'm here at the Hooters Hotel and Casino, not because I have a uh, craving for wings and women in short, orange booty shorts, well, no more than usual. What I'm here to for is to see uh, Ryan Stock and Amber Lynn, otherwise known as the Comedy Daredevils. They come highly recommended. I've checked out your their clips on YouTube. You've probably seen them on America's Got Talent, Ellen, The Tonight Show, Steve Harvey Show, The Gong Show, Jim Rose Circus Side Show. They've been around for a long time. And now they're headlining Vegas, and just in time for Halloween, I want to see what these freaks are all about. I'm here with the amazing Ryan Stock, uh, as, as you've seen him on America's Got Talent and other shows. Now let me ask a uh, first question, is Stock a stage name or is that your real name? That's my real name. That's, I don't know why. I, yeah, people have asked me that. I'm not sure why. Because it rhymes with shock and the shock entertainment. I don't know. But it's a real name, Ryan Stock. Did you ever think of changing to shock? No. You know what? I started as a magician uh, when I was a kid and it was Ryan Stock and I always said no stage name. I don't didn't want to do the stage name thing. So right. and it's easy to, it's not like it's a complicated name. It's three syllables, Ryan Stock, it's easy, everybody yeah. can say it, so yeah. Why change it? It works. <laughs> now you did, I, I I saw your show, it was really good. There's a guy next to me maniacally laughing at every trick. <laughs> Uh, you do a lot of stuff. Uh, you stick a lot of stuff in your nose. Yeah, and well, go, that's, yeah that's how much coke do have you done? Seriously? Yeah, no, I just like the way it smells. You know, yeah, you know, I don't. No, it's not. A, it's not a coke thing. It's a. It's a learning and stretching out the sinuses. I mean, it started out. Um, you know, with that traditional blockhead act. With I'm right. sure you've seen hammering a nail in the nose. Yeah. And I, I just grew tired of it. I was working burlesque festivals, things like that, where that was mm -hmm. what people were doing in every show. And I went. We can change this. We can do something a little different. And I started doing that in the late 90s uh, uh, with the drill and then in 2000 with the meat hook and stuff. Joined the Jim Rose Circus and mm -hmm. started learning all. You so know, have you really, have you seen x-rays and saw that your sinuses have been stretched? Y y um, you can't really tell through x-rays. I do have x-rays. I do have fluoroscopes uh, like from doing uh, several TV series. That's what they go to is everybody wants to do an x-ray. So I've got x-rays and everything of it. Uh, you can't tell much in there, but I've had sinus uh, cameras run down and they can see scarring and they can see uh, points uh, because I with when I put the meat head through I pulled cars I've hung from it right I've uh, lifted hundreds of pounds I've actually compressed all of the, uh, the scar tissue and or not the scar tissue the uh, cartilage into scar tissue so it's mm -hmm. all crushed and you can see that through uh, through nasal cam cameras and stuff so. oh well, well <laughs> great technology on all ends yeah you know it's good to know what's going on in there yeah <laughs> so it's I mean he got it to do to do a show at Hooters now you're at Hooters right there's three shows not currently at Hooters that I'm aware of. The Country Superstars. Correct. Haven't seen them yet. Elvis. The King. Trinidad, Trent Carlini. Yeah. And you. Right. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things is not like the other. we got two tribute shows in me. And, um, you know, it, this this all stemmed from, I mean, Hooters was reopening their showroom. They had uh, they had a couple other acts signed. And then uh, we, uh, as soon as we had our AGT thing hit, we went, uh, I mean, people who saw it, the air to the neck went mega viral. I mean, we were trending over the Olympics. We were trending over Pokemon Go for a minute, if you can believe that. And I can't, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> and it went so crazy that um, we just immediately got a call from a production company who, uh, they're the same producers that do uh, Pip the Magic Dragon. Right. They do um, the show X Comedy, X Country, X Burlesque. Right. Uh, and they said, do you want to sign? Do you want to do a show? We've got a room at Hooters, and Hooters was the room we were already looking at, so it was right. very serendipitous. It was like, yeah, I'll sign that. And the <laughs> prize for winning America's Got Talent was to get a Vegas show. Right, which even, you know, I mean, even when you get a Vegas show on the contracts, you only get three shows. You, right. You do you do three different nights with uh, some of the other acts. So this year it's our friends, uh, Kate Face, good buddy of ours, Clairvoyance, good buddy of ours, and the winner, um, Grace Vanderwall, are doing three nights. So to actually get your long-running show, takes you have to then find 
your own production company, your own uh, funding. Your well, own I didn't know that. I thought they uh, that was. No, so because I thought every, you know, as Terry Fader was obviously the big uh, thing that happened. Also, now. his own know. producer and everything. So I mean, it does take time. It usually takes a year from winning the show to then having your own show in Vegas. And because of what happened with us, uh, our show, our soft opening was the night after America's Got Talent finale. So wow. it was kind of a shortcut from point A to point B, which is nice. You know? Yeah. Might as well, I mean, you know, you've done everything else the hard way up to now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the thing that went viral, I'm assuming, was the mistake. The mistake, yeah, the arrow to the neck. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, it went more than viral. As soon as it happened on stage, um, I mean, we've done the trick a hundred times, and more than a hundred times, and uh, never gone wrong, and as soon as it goes wrong on stage, we're just like we thought like it was the worst thing ever for about 20 minutes and then um well when you had a flaming arrow in your neck well, I, th I think that might have been in the back of your mind no i mean it's it, it getting shot it wasn't that wasn't the issue if people uh look me up online ryan stock i used to have a tv show called guinea pig and right. i was shot with less lethal weapons pepper spray tasers rubber bullets beanbag rounds i mean i've been shot with everything so I, that wasn't the issue. The issue was, is this, what is this going to do? You know, is this, is this going to make a job of being the stunt coordinating that we do? We do, we're, we're consultants for uh, dangerous acts. Mm -hmm. Is this going to affect that? And uh, they tried to make us go to the red carpet. We said, we want to see footage. Take us to the editing room. We need to see what went wrong because we have no idea right. whether it was a laser sight off or whether it was amber or whether we had no idea. And they, we had you been fighting that night? No, <laughs> we weren't fighting, and, but they wouldn't let us go look at the editing bay because we had to get down to the red carpet. So right. we went, pulled up the phone and went, maybe somebody's put it online. It's only happened 20 minutes ago. Let's take a look. And we, we type in America's Got Talent. And man gets shot with Flamme on TMZ, Access Hollywood, Inside Edition, yeah. like everything within 20 minutes. And we went, okay, maybe this isn't that bad. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then cue to... It's the best way to lose. Yeah, cue to three weeks of non-stop phone calls and the interviews and you know up to a dozen interviews a day just straight barely sleeping just from this uh, from all over the world i mean it hit all over the world we're doing from italy and germany and like it was just crazy so, oh, you should have messed up before that's what i said amber should have shot me in the neck when she should have shot me in the neck a long time ago Just, I mean, you've been on Jay Leno, yeah. Ella DeGeneres' show, yeah. Steve Harvey's show, yeah. America's Got Talent. Yeah. These aren't the edgiest shows or the edgiest people. Right, they're not, but... Uh, How are you able to fit into that? Well, I mean, I think, you know, for years we, we kind of... we put stuff out there. I mean, Amber does uh, a lot of work. She wakes up in the morning, she goes, she contacts uh, media, she contacts television shows, she puts it out there. And right. we found, you know, for years we would say, I want to do my human meathead trick on the show, and they'd go too much can you do this trick and we'd say no we want to do this so we really fought to to push to do more and uh, right. i think as things have moved on i mean they're getting it's getting easier to get this kind of stuff on tv people are you know they're they're not as squeamish as they once were they're right. willing to let more go on tv so at years ago it was a little bit harder to get stuff on tv i mean i got a lot of mileage out of uh, me swallowing a coat hanger getting hit in the head with a toaster mm -hmm. bending it inside my body and that kind of got kind of opened up a lot of doors for us to, right. to start being able to do grosser, weirder things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, now you're from Canada. Mm -hmm. Now why uh, why are there so many comedians from Canada? You know, I have no idea. Because I've been know. up there and uh, it's not a barrel of laughs. I don't know. <laughs> I, that's maybe why there's so many comedians up there. It's cold and they're bored and, you know, I mean, these people get creative up there. I think it's got, I think Canada's got kind of a, a more European look on entertainment and stuff. So you see a lot of, like, um, comedians like acts like prop acts uh physical comedy come out of canada because i don't know maybe it's just maybe it's the more european thing maybe it's that we're bored and cold and finding something to do right too much time like, on our hands uh, yeah, yeah, know, like, yeah there are a lot of balance balance chainsaws things. and uh, yeah. uh how you guys met the story how we met. I mean, it's, it sounds like a, it sounds like a, a, a legend. Yeah, no, it's a true actually, story. I was actually a crying fairy when he found me. Yes, absolutely. The fairy part, I, I, I understand. You were, <laughs> you were crying, and he, you were doing a show. We were both working a show uh, uh, separ separately at the Edmonton Fringe Festival, which okay, was a festival in Edmonton, Alberta. And I was walking through an alley, and there was a 
girl dressed as a fairy sitting on a little bench crying. Okay. I went to see if she was okay and then yeah. I knew she was working there and I needed uh, an assistant at the time so I hired her as my assistant and yeah. uh, that was 15 years ago. Still together. Still together 24 7. Now that's the thing. You guys are together 24 7. Now I could be with you 24 7 but I mean <laughs> isn't, there, isn't there I mean there's got to be some time where you're like uh, I got to be by myself both of, course of you. We, I mean any couples argue when we're arguing about things I mean we will go to separate parts of the house, but um, we're still in the same place. I mean, yeah. it's um, you know, of course you have disagreements, but if you can if you can get through that, because a lot of people live and work with their spouse and or, yeah. or their girlfriend, and that doesn't work out. Right. I mean, for a lot of people, it doesn't work out. But right. I mean, so far, 15 years, you know. And that was the Freudian slip, Amber. I know you. Uh, <laughs> the the scariest trick of all, he hasn't put a ring on it yet. But well, yeah, uh, I put no. I put two rings on it, engagement rings. They both uh, disappeared, but. Uh, the yeah. ocean in Australia stole one. <laughs> yes. No, no, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, we actually, we got engaged when we were I, I, younger. Yeah. And you, then we, um, and then we just started touring around. And it's not about time. It's not, we just, I, we're just like, yeah, we pretty much are married. I mean, yeah. you, you guys look, uh, you, look, you guys look way too happy to actually get married, <laughs> to be honest with you. And it shows on stage. It's definitely, you can see the affection on stage yeah. and it is genuine. Yeah. What, I, what I found uh, interesting on, uh, on, the, uh, on the act is you're largely silent. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Off stage, I'm the one who talks. On stage, he's the one who talks. Correct. Right, yeah. right. Because you've been very quiet in this interview so far. But Not you, very. yeah, I know. <laughs> you're, you're very, but but it's kind of like Penn and Teller, but Penn and Teller's really hot. It's true. <laughs>